So I'll now go on to look at a few examples which will hopefully bring them to life a bit. This is a situation I, uh, people often come to me with. They've uh, done some, an experiment or several experiments. Like this was described to me as six experiments. It turns out it's six biological replicates. So there were six experiments with three so-called technical replicates per group in the experiment. And I don't know really what the science, all the scientific details of the experiment, except that um, increasing concentrations of a bacteria were applied to samples, human and bovine samples, to see what the levels of this CAP. So we've got different, these are the means of, there'll be per group, there's going to be the six experiments and the three replicates. So we've got 18 observations included in these means, but of course there's variation between the experiments and the replicates that we want to bear in mind. It might be tempting first to look at what is each of the experiments telling us, and uh, so we've got the means, there'll be three each experiment, there's three technical replicates, so each of these means has got based on three observations. We can get the difference, and for just to make it look a bit neater, I, I've actually this should be a negative value, but I, I've made them all positive, so it's a bit easier. To, to look at. And you could do a, a test on, for each experiment, and so if you look at these, it looks as if there's a difference between the two species, the samples from the two species, which is significant most of the time, not quite significant in experiments three and six. But what our question might be is, what's the combined, I'll call it the species effect, you know, human versus bovine. This is what the main objective of the experiments were, to sort of find out if there was a difference in some way between the human and the bovine results. So we could think about a model, so the, the response, the CAP response, we could say, well, let's fit a species effect and the experiment effect. Or it might be that we want to think about a species and experiment interaction as well, because perhaps the, this species effect varies between the experiments. And we can see that it, it does. I mean, you'd expect that by chance to some extent, but uh, maybe it's kind of varying a bit more by, than by chance. We don't know. So how might we analyse that to get a combined result? A very naive approach would be simply to take all these, there's 18 values all together here and 18 there, and to just do a t-test based on them to see if they were different but that's completely ignoring the fact they've come from different experiments. So if that's done, so we've got, we're comparing two groups of 18 to a two-sample t-test, get a highly significant result. You might think, yes, I've proved beyond doubt that there's a difference between the human and bovine samples. But really, you do need to take into account, and I think most people realise this, the, the fact the data are from different experiments. So one simple approach to address that might be to take these means, we've got six here and six here, and use those to do a paired t-test. And it has to be a paired t-test because they're paired within the experiment. So effectively we're taking the difference between them and the paired t-test will be based on the differences. And if that's done, we much it's a sort of larger, that's the standard error there of the mean difference. And we get, still get a significant result, but it's not as significant as we had before. So, and that's a satisfactory approach if there's not any missing data. If there are missing data, if you've just got, say, one value missing at one of the experiments, that approach won't be too bad, but uh, you'd still get some improvements fitting a mixed model. If you'd, say, got one of these values, sort of a whole mean completely, sorry, the human mean here completely missing in one experiment, then you would definitely have an improvement from using a mixed model, and I'll look at that in a minute. And then finally, we can, rather than have to take the means, you can also use a mixed model, and in that you would fit as fixed effect, the species effect, comparing the human and the bovine, two, two factors there, and random effects would be the experiments. And you would also want to allow that species effect to vary randomly across the experiments. And when that model was fitted, the variance components all came out to be positive, showing, yes, there are differences in the results overall between the experiments, and the species effect does vary more than expected by chance between the experiments, and the residual 
is just going to be how much variability there is in, within experiments and species, so between the technical replicates. Um, but you'll notice the results are exactly the same as the, from the paired t-test. And that's because here we've got completely balanced data and no, nothing missing. So in some situations, if you're in that situation, it is OK to do a paired t-test, but it must be on the means for the groups and experiments. Otherwise, you're assuming you've got more independent observations than you really have. So I mentioned uh, a mixed model could allow for different variances um, between the groups. If we, if we do that here, this is the model we had before. If we allow different variances for the groups, then we've got this different species variance component. Um, sorry, species by experiment variance component, we can have different for the, sorry, that's the bovine and the human groups. So the humans are varying more in terms of how much the species affect differs between the experiments and the residuals, which is how much the technical replicates are varying, then the bovine samples are varying more. And you might think, well, was that just by chance? We've only got small amounts of data. Maybe it was just a chance result. And you can actually test that. I won't go into the details of a test, but there's something called a likelihood ratio test which you can use to compare the models and see if this model with different variances is a significant improvement over the one with that assumed that the groups have got the same variances. And that test here came out to be highly significant. This is basically you test it against a chi-squared 2 distribution and our test statistic of 13 came out to be highly significant. So we could include that this model was a significant improvement with the different, allowing different amounts of variability for the two groups. It still gives actually the same conclusion here, just slightly less sensitive difference between the species, but we can be satisfied that we've allowed for that. And we might also be interested in the fact that the, um, the variability is, does seem to be quite different in between the groups. So there we were considering the 0.5 concentration. I thought it might be interesting to look at another one where yeah. the, it was sort of less clear whether there was a difference. So we've looked at this one before. We'll look at the 5 ng per mil concentration here and see what, how things go there. And this is a similar table showing the t-tests results for each of the experiments. And things are less clear cut here. Some of them, like experiment four, highly significant difference, but uh, sometimes not significant experiment two. And in experiment three, I've highlighted that because there was a significant difference, but in the other direction. So the results uh, are quite confusing. But nevertheless, we still got six experiments and we want to put together the results to see what we can conclude. So doing exactly the same analyses then Two sample t-test where we assume that uh, we've got 18 observations don't take in, on each of the groups, don't take into account anything about the experiments. We get a significant result, but that's an erroneous assumption because the data aren't independent. We do have six different experiments. And the paired t-test, we'll do that. It's not quite significant, which, and that's a satisfactory approach, we do the mixed model and get the same result. So it's quite nice to be able to, even though these results are conflicting, we can still combine them and despite this result in the wrong direction, we're still almost getting a significant result there, but not clearly so as in the last analysis. A key area where mix, another key area where mixed models comes in is when you've got missing data. So if we just assume that um, we've got something, this perhaps, yeah, I should have deleted one of these actually, but perhaps the whole of this difference is missing for one of the experiments. We don't have that to include in the data set. And um, so we'll assume that for one group and one experiment, we don't have any human values available. You can probably see that a paired t-test would only use these five values. So we'll just look at the paired t. We'll forget the first approach, which really wasn't a sensible approach, using a two-sample t-test on the raw data. So the paired t-test, non-significant, and we've got a standard error of 0 
But the mixed model now will take into account this experiment too and use the data on the bovine mean, even though it doesn't, I should have deleted that and we, we don't have the human data. And from this, we get a slightly different estimate of the um, difference for the groups and the standard error is slightly smaller. So we've gained a bit of efficiency because we have been able to use that data from experiment two, even though we only have it for one group. So that's a, a good reason for using a mixed model. Although I have to say, if you've got complete data, you can quite happily do a paired t-test on the mean 